Hello there, Ray here, and one of the last pre-releases for 1.14 is out. This is pre-release 4, and they are saying that they are expecting this to be the last pre-release before the full release. And they're aiming to do the full release of the Village and Pillage update for Minecraft Java Edition on Tuesday, April the 23rd, which is next Tuesday. And the last four pre-releases had all to do with fixing a large amount of different bugs, most of which came about just because of the new features added to 1.14. This means it's extremely important if you guys run across any bizarre behavior while playing 1.14 that you report it and hopefully it'll get fixed when they do the final release or they might come out with another pre-release. I'm also hoping to do a video with some other people about major bugs that affect the technical Minecraft community. And hopefully they'll also fix these prior to doing the full release. I remember at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Wednesday and Friday we have our snapshot stream where we work on different stuff with the new snapshots. With you guys, you guys can join our server and we can test out new things. Recently we've been doing a bunch of testing to do with dogs and then recent fix so they can now give loot such as wither skulls. So if you guys like to join us during that time, there will be more information down in the description. Today I will be going over the major changes of the pre-release 4 as well as 3 and 2 and pointing out changes that will affect the survival players. Pre-release 4 consists of many bug fixes as well as some performance improvements. They fixed the bug to do what burned out redstone torch maps for causing memory leaks. In general, there is a lot of memory leaks occurring inside of Minecraft. This is one of the reasons on the Protect server why we cannot run our flying machine to the end of the world border all at once, even if we found a way to do it because over time we use up large parts of our server's memory. This is why it's often advised when you have servers to restart them because of these memory leaks. And even in single players, if you have went ahead and generated a lot of chunks, go ahead and just restart it. and It'll perform a lot better. One that I come across quite often is when I go in and out of worlds a lot, eventually it really slows down my game, so I have to restart my whole client. They fix a bug to do with villagers and part of their trades being cut off on the side. But you can still see villagers have a problem as sometimes leaving the door open, as oftentimes I'll come to villages and I'll find doors that are just left ajar so the villagers can walk right in. They fix a bug to do when giving a fox some type of food that uses a bowl. It would eat the bowl and the food both. And you guys asked me if suspicious stews would also work on fox and we did test that during our stream and they will eat those and they will get the effects of it. Here you go, you can see he went ahead and ate the whole stew and now he just has a bowl in his mouth instead of eating the bowl itself. And if you would like to get the bowls out of their mouth, you just give them a different type of food and what they'll do is they'll take prioritize over the new food over top of any type of non-food item. So he'll drop the bowl and pick up the food. They change the bottom texture of the composter so it's different than the sides. They fix a bug that villagers were going to the wrong workstations to work. They fix a bug to do with the raid bar disappearing in villages in the nether. That's one of the things that you guys asked if raids could occur in the nether as well as the end dimension and they can. And we also tested to see if villagers would actually sleep in beds in the nether as well as the end dimension because when the player does it what happens is the bed explodes but the villagers are able to sleep in beds otherwise you wouldn't be able to get villages in the end dimension so if you guys do want to have village or even have a raid in the end dimension it is possible they fix the direction in which the loom was facing when generated inside of villages hopefully this is the last bug that has to do with looms as there have been many bugs to do with the looms over the past snapshots the music slider bar wasn't working correctly and they fixed that when a wandering trader was given a negative age, it would actually try to have a hitbox of such as like a baby villager. They fixed quite a few bugs to do with foxes and their size being changed because of different stuff being in their mouth. For the longest time, fox have 20 health and they have fixed this, now they only have 10. And I did think it was kind of strange that they had the same amount of health as a player did. They fixed some more visual bugs to do with the foxes, like they're getting stuck in the pouncing mode or sliding while going into the sleeping mode. Some stuff you've probably seen in my earlier videos. They fixed two different bugs to do with the cartographer table. One was allowing the maps to get duplicated, and one was actually causing maps to get lost. They fixed a bug that just came out recently where mobs were not being affected by skylight. They fixed a kind of strange bug to do with skeletons. When they'd be in the sunlight, they would try to burn, and then they would like try to shoot the player, but then they would like kind of give up and run away because they were like thinking they need to look for a shelter, but they really couldn't find one. But now you can see they're constantly shooting the player. If they can't find shelter, they're just gonna go all out and try to kill the player before they die themselves. They fixed a bug to do with the fill command where it wasn't calculating the skylight underneath of it properly. And you guys brought this up to me, but I wasn't able to actually test this properly to see it occur. But now it's been fixed. They fixed a bug to do with lighting not properly working in some chunks. They fixed a bug where villagers were moving very quickly up water. Iron golems and villagers were leaving the village and they have now fixed this. So we probably won't see iron golems traveling off like we did in the past. Like you get iron golem way over there and then the villagers would end up spawning a bunch more iron golems. 
They fixed that same bug that I reported to do with players crouching and kind of getting a double bounce. It wasn't completely fixed. We noticed in some circumstances you were still getting a double bounce, but it seems to be gone now. They fixed a the bug to do with crouching being delayed. This is something we complained about quite a bit during our streams because when you're trying to work, especially on multiplayer surfers, any little delay when you go to click on something, if you crouch and there's a delay, you end up clicking a different spot than you anticipated. And it seems like a really minor thing, but when you do a lot of building, it becomes pretty obvious. They made it so that when you get the hero of the village effect, you will also not be given particles, even if you get the effect. Very similar to like the bad omen effect, so you won't have all those particles in your face. Ravagers that had passengers weren't attacking iron golems or villagers. And you guys did point out that I was saying Ravagers instead of Ravager. They fixed that really funny bug where I showed zombies were going up to the center of the village and just attacking air. And it seemed that they were trying to attack the center of the village, but there wasn't anything there. They fixed a really strange bug that we found during our streaming where if you would ride a horse up on a diagonal, the horse would kind of get stuck inside the diagonal and he could also take damage, which is extremely strange. They also fix it so when you write entities down and then you dismount, you don't end up doing damage to yourself. They fix a bug to do with mobs unable to get out of water. That just came up in a recent snapshot. It seems they're always changing the way villages generate, and now you can see the path will actually go down to the very bottom of the ravine and be placed down there and then continue up here. And in some versions, it would actually bridge across. They fixed a strange behavior to do with TNT that was inconsistent from previous versions where TNT wasn't always blowing up at the exact same time and it was affecting TNT cannons. There was a recent bug where shears were not taking damage when you would use them to shear sheep. They fixed it so you can get enchantments off of enchanted books by using a grindstone. Curse enchantments still won't be taken off. They fixed a bug to do with light levels being incorrect during generation. So like underneath of overhangs is putting in the wrong light level. They fixed a really nasty bug that I reported, which is items were not stacking into a single stack. So I couldn't figure out why I was making a pumpkin farm and it was extremely laggy because there was like thousands of pumpkins, but they're all individual items. And even though they were close together, they wouldn't stack up. So I'm so glad that it's fixed before the full release of 1.14. They fixed a bug to do with shulker boxes when destroyed in creative for actually losing their items and they weren't dropping. So if you guys don't know most stuff, when you break it, it won't drop items, but when you break a shulker box, it will drop the item so you can pick it back up again. This makes it nice for making these kind of custom shulker boxes, which I like to keep quite a few of them here in my save tab. That way when I do testing, I can easily pull them out. This has like all the different type of armor, all the enchantments, like stuff with extra looting, so I can test all that good stuff. Tall seagrass wasn't actually dropping any seagrass, but you can see now it does, and there's actually two pieces. They fix a bug to do with when you remove enchantments from a sword. It was still thinking that the sword had some type of enchantments on it, and therefore it was actually counting towards the cost when you add more enchantments. So if you guys don't know, the more enchantments you kind of add to a sword or any item, it's going to cost more as you put more enchantments onto it. And you think by putting it into a grindstone, this would erase it all. So now they have fixed it, so it does act that way. Zombie villagers weren't actually having the right type of biome clothing on for their biome type. So now in theory we have tons of different types of villager zombies that we have to collect in 1.14 on the project server as we're trying to collect every single type of mob inside of Minecraft. So just think of all the different types of villager zombies as well as a different type of coats to do with the biome as well as the different types of jobs. So this guy here is like a nitwit but he also has like the biome of the cold biome so he has kind of like that white wool outfit on. So it's going to be really challenging to try to collect them all on the project server. They fix it so that the watering villager will no longer spawn in worlds that are made out of the void biome. They fix a bug that you cannot eat food if you're targeting a block where the crops could be planted. They fix that bug to do with villagers when they were planting, they were planting very slow. So now as soon as they harvest, they should replant. They fix a bug to do with suspicious stews and the saturation from the ones that come from shipwrecks as well as villagers still had a lasting effect. Those are all the major bugs from pre-release 2, 3, and 4. They do kind of seem to be going really fast with these pre-releases, so definitely be sure to voice your concerns about any bugs they know before they do the full release of 1.14. And with this 1.14 snapshot, a lot of the problems have been due with chunks that are not showing up. There'd be big black spots or the game to just not show you what's out in the distance. And they have been doing a lot of work to try to improve these in the last few snapshots. And hopefully they did completely fix all the chunk problems. Otherwise, they are definitely going to be a problem when the full release comes out. That's all the major changes to do with the pre-releases, and we'll have to wait and see if they come out with another pre-release number 5, or if they come out with a full release on the 23rd like they are anticipating to do so. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts about this down in the comments, and don't forget about tonight is their snapshot stream, where we will be designing up some new farms as well as test out the recent behavior changes. That will be at 9pm Eastern Standard Time tonight, Wednesday.
And I really enjoy working with you guys designing up different farms on there. And you guys get to join the Snapshot server too. And don't forget to give this video a like as well as share with somebody. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.